friends now we are moving almost to the final stages of this course on production and operations management and we have discussed uh, different issues uh, in detail with respect to forecasting inventory material planning facility layouts uh, project management uh, quality management uh, some of the important areas we covered now we will use this remaining time for discussing some of the latest trends or some of the burning issues in the field of operations management and uh, one such topic which we are going to discuss in today's session is related to just in time and lean operations when we were discussing the inventory management we had uh, a small introduction of uh, jit which is uh, normally understood as a system of inventory management uh, where we are providing products uh, just in time whenever need is there immediately we are procuring the products uh, and we are not keeping any inventory normally this kind of myth is there with respect to jit but it is not so we do keep inventory in jit but we keep a very minimal level of inventory the second topic which we are going to cover in this session is about the lean operations lean operations are very important because of improved competitiveness you want to increase competitiveness and that is only possible when you are lean lean means when you are able to avoid when you are able to eliminate wastage in your systems so these two things are very important and the future direction of operations management uh, that uh, how to have a jit enabled system and how to have uh, lean concepts uh, in your operation system so we are going to discuss these two topics in this particular session now when we are talking of uh, lean system so it is a flexible system that uses the minimal resources and produces high quality goods or services so one very important thing is that nowadays we want uh, more and more variety we are going into the customization direction and to provide more and more variety to fulfill the requirements of the customers uh, uniquely you need to have uh, flexible manufacturing systems systems which can produce wide variety of products and for that purpose uh, lean is a very important enabler when you have lean systems then only you can have flexible manufacturing and when you have flexible manufacturing then only you can produce wide variety so it becomes you can say a type of necessity only with lean approach you can provide more varieties to your customers so a lean operation is a flexible system of operation that uses considerably lesser amounts of resources like activities people inventory floor space than a traditional system of manufacturing so because we are uh, eliminating waste in lean system so we are able to work uh, with less amount of inventory we are able to work with less amount of manpower we are able to work uh, with less amount of floor space so you use uh, less resources and when we are using less resources so we say that we are removing bulkiness of the system so by removing bulkiness of the system we are able to follow the idea of lean the whole idea is that uh, how to eliminate unwanted things and uh, when you are eliminating unwanted things uh, and you have only those things uh, which are responsible for direct value addition then therefore your uh, output will have a better efficiency then another important concept is jit just in time just in time is a highly coordinated processing system in which goods move through the system and services are performed as they are needed so it is a system where you have uh, different stages in your processing these are uh, suppliers 
this is stage 1 processing, this is stage 2, this is stage 3 and during these processings you keep some inventory, but you keep this inventory in such a coordinated manner that if this supplier is taking 2 days lead time to supply product. So, only inventory for 2 days is there and you have a regular system of receiving the inventories after 2 days each. Stage 1 is taking 1 days time for supplying the product. So, here you have inventory of only 1 day. The stage 2 is taking 6 hours in supplying the products to stage 3. So, you have inventory for only 6 hours at stage 3. So, in this coordinated manner, so that you understand the capabilities of your previous stage and the previous stage understands the requirement of a successive stage. So, having this kind of coordination, we are able to develop a, a smooth flow of material so that uh, nowhere in your entire system inventories are unnecessarily piled up. So, this type of system is uh, GIT and elimination of waste is lean manufacturing. Now, the concept of lean manufacturing where we are talking of uh, elimination of waste is actually a contribution of Toyota car company. The Toyota approach or the Toyota production system is basically responsible for development of this idea of uh, lean manufacturing. We have a full NPTEL course on Toyota production system where we have discussed in detail that how this philosophy is implemented and what are the various tenants of the Toyota production system. Here in this particular session, we are going to discuss the gist of the Toyota production system that what are the important terminologies, what are the basic idea, basic philosophy about the Toyota production system. So, one important point which is to be known and that is a Japanese word that is muda. So, muda that means waste and inefficiency. So, it says that we need to eliminate Buddha, we need to eliminate waste and therefore, our inefficiencies will go down and efficiencies will increase. So, this is the most important driving philosophy of this concept of uh, lean manufacturing. Waste and inefficiencies can be minimized by using the following practices and what are these? One is pull system. Pull system is replacing material or parts based on demand produce only what is needed. This is also the GIT that you are producing only what is required by your next stage. You are not keeping the stock available. So, in the previous diagram if you see that all these stages like stage 1 is directly supplying to stage 2. So, no stock is maintained at this level, no stock is maintained at this level, no stock is maintained at this level. Whatever we are producing, we are supplying it as per the requirement of our next stage that and whatever is the demanded at the next stage. And the same concept is actually implemented by the name of Kanban in Japanese organizations. Kanban is uh, the meaning of uh, visual signals that uh, we give uh, signals, yes, now I require the product. So, just by seeing the signal, the previous stage will start producing and start supplying. So, the successive stages are pulling products from the previous stages. That is the meaning of uh, Kanban system. So, it is a manual system used for controlling the movement of parts and materials that responds to signals of the need that is the demand of uh, your next stage for delivery of parts or materials. This applies 
go to delivery to the factory and delivery to each work station. So, this Kanban is applicable within an organization and it can be applicable to entire supply chain also that from one organization to another organization if we need to supply products we can follow the system of Kanban that when my customer is requiring the product when a signal comes from the supplier uh, from the customer then only I am going to supply and the same thing is possible within an organization where various work centers are arranged. In one of the uh, classes of facility layout, we discussed different types of layouts. Now, in that uh, system of layout, uh, we discussed one assembly line. Now, in that assembly line, it is quite possible that once the work at work station 4 is over, then work station 4 requires more products to work. And then only workstation 3 will supply additional products to workstation 4. So, in this way, the Kanban system is a very useful way to control and coordinate the flow of inventory in your organization. So, Kanban system is basically based on this pull philosophy. This is uh, one of the same thing and uh, it is also known as JIT. Then another important term is uh, Hejunka. We discussed in our quality management classes that variations are natural. But later on we realized with the help of concepts like Taguchi qualities function, with the help of uh, Six Sigma that uh, variations are undesirable. These are natural, but these are undesirable. As you move away from your central values mean values customer satisfaction also starts decreasing and Taguchi said even within your limits of specification if you are moving away from the mean value cost of quality starts increasing. So, we should minimize the variation we should try to produce more products which are on the central line which are on the mean value of the specification. So, it says that variations in production volume lead to waste. So, minimize the variation. The workload must be labeled, volume and variety must be averaged to achieve a steady flow of work. So, it is saying that we continuously need to do those things where our variations should be minimized. So, like if you remember in our material requirement planning, we discussed two types of production strategies one was the label strategy and another was the change strategy. In change strategy we used to fluctuate the volume of production, but in the label strategy we used to have almost a constant level of output. So, this point says that we should have the same level of production volume and even though demand may be there may not be there, but if you have the same level of production sometime you may in have some kind of inventory sometime you may have back orders, but it will create minimum wastages whenever you are regularly changing your setups. So, initial one or two products may be wasted because of the transient because of getting the machine into proper functioning zone sometime you are hiring new employees they may not be trained. So, they may do lot of quality related wastages. So, if you have the label production system in that case variations can be minimized and that will lead to better quality and more efficiency in your production system. So, uh, if you visit any Japanese uh, plant you will find that uh, the production volumes have very minimum variations while if you go to other parts of the globe and you see their manufacturing setups. So, their production volumes have lot of fluctuations. So, if the demand is more 
दे मे गो फॉर टू शिफ्ट थ्री शिफ्ट इफ डिमांड इज लेस दे मे गो फॉर वन शिफ्ट एंड दे मे फायर दे मे ले ऑफ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ एम्प्लॉयज बट इन जैपनीज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन यू विल नॉट फाइंड सच काइंड ऑफ इंस्टेंसेज ऑन ए रेगुलर बेसिस सो वेरिएशन इन प्रोडक्शन वॉल्यूम नीड टू बी मिनिमाइज एज फार एज पॉसिबल देन काइजन दैट इज अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म रिलेटेड टू Toyota concepts, Kaizen we have already discussed in our quality management classes. It is about uh, continuous improvement. That uh, how you are continuously improving your production process. Uh, so various process related improvement activities require your regular attention. So that is uh, the part of uh, uh, Kaizen. Then Jidoka. Jidoka means uh, you cannot build quality. at the last stage when inspection is taking place so the final inspector the final supervisor who is putting that sticker on the product that it has passed the quality control that person is not responsible for the quality you have to build quality at the source now what is the source you have to build quality at the design stage you have to build quality at the manufacturing stage and you have to build quality in the mindset of the people who are working in the organization so quality at the source is very important concept of toyota philosophy and it says that a machine automatically stops when it detects a bad part a worker then stops the line also known as automation so machine should be developed the capabilities should be of such a level that as soon as a defective piece is produced the line should be immediately stopped so that you can see why it has happened so and that level of automation is needed in toyota systems and finally it says that uh, it is team efforts we need to use a small groups of workers for continuous improvement because one person or one leader cannot do the entire improvement activity so you need to divide your employees into various groups various smaller groups so that they can do this kind of improvement activity so the team efforts the involvement of all your employees are very much required in toyota approach this we also also discussed under uh, tqm that how tqm is a team approach activity same thing is applicable in the lean and jit operations that uh, lean and jit operations are only possible with team activities now when we are talking of uh, toyota approach and particularly we discuss the philosophy that uh, we need to eliminate muda we need to finish this uh, waste muda means waste from our manufacturing setup or maybe from our service organizations also now this is seven types of waste and these are one is waste of over production if you are producing more than the requirement that is a type of waste that is not adding waste is anything it is anything which is not adding value so that is your waste so if you are doing over production that is a type of waste you are doing in the system waiting your parts products are waiting for their turn to be processed further so that is also a type of waste that means you have not planned your production planning properly transportation so unnecessary transportation from one place to another place too much of material handling that is also a type of waste it is not going to use therefore proper layout planning is very much important to minimize the unnecessary transportation of goods inside the plant inappropriate processing or you can say over processing 
Now, many a times if you do not know the customer requirements properly and uh, many a times it happens that uh, we want to build so many features into our products and we do excessive processing of the product. So, that is also a type of waste customer does not require those many features customer does not require that many activities, but you have done extra processing. Many a times in India you must have seen that uh, when we are constructing our houses. So, uh, the uh, linters which are being prepared. So, in that uh, we do lot of uh, over processing and we do a uh, lot of uh, with the concrete we mix a uh, uh, lot of rods of steels uh, so that we get more safety. But uh, in fact, uh, there is a limit to safety you cannot get beyond that, but we unnecessarily uh, mix uh, too much of uh, concrete and rods uh, so that uh, we get extra safety, but it is not so. So, in India particularly we are uh, too much obsessed with uh, extra processing we need to avoid that. Then unnecessary inventory. Many a time we think of a uh, lot of uh, fluctuations, a uh, lot of uh, uh, variations which are not in our control and to handle those variations uh, we keep uh, inventory. So, uh, we need to see that uh, how much safety stock is actually required otherwise uh, unnecessary keeping of inventory is also a type of waste. So, inventory is not going to help you in uh, any value addition. Then unnecessary and excess motion. When we are uh, producing products, uh, so uh, sometime small minor motions are also very important because these motions consume energy. These motions may result into your extra fatigue and as a result of that uh, these are not adding value rather it may create more inefficiencies. So, see those small minor motions which are waste and a very good example you can see from the field of the sports when a player who is playing golf. So, even the minute uh, movement of the golf stick can make the difference in the stroke which he is playing. When a swimmer when a athlete is going to start the run in that case uh, how he or she is taking off that small motion difference can make the whole result a different story. So, the excess motion or unnecessary motions are to be avoided and I think the sports is the best field to have the examples in this particular category. Then the defects, the defects which you are producing, the poor quality where you are generating scrap, when you are generating the rework uh, and all those things uh, that is also a type of waste uh, and that is very easy to understand I need not uh, explain it much. But I also want to add one more type of waste nowadays and that is the earth waste in this list. And that waste is uh, the waste of uh, human creativity. Many a times we are not able to take the advantage of uh, human creativity, the employees working with us. In our previous slide, we discussed that uh, Toyota system or implementation of lean and JIT is a team activity and we need to make a smaller teams for continuous improvement. Now, if you do not give enough environment, if you are not creating an ecosystem where individuals can give their best output, how can you take your organization ahead? So, many a times your employees are capable, they have good ideas, but you have not provided the platforms to take the advantage of those ideas. So, in that case you are wasting the human creativity. So, that type of waste also happens in many organization where the proper platforms, proper opportunities are not given to the employees to show uh, their talent, uh, to show their skills for the advantage of the organization. So, these are the different types of waste and uh, we need to eliminate 
all these types of waste. So, that takes a lot of time that uh, how to identify these waste and what are the tools and techniques uh, which can help us uh, in eliminating those waste. But uh, uh, certainly, uh, it is very very important to identify waste and continuously try to eliminate these waste. If you continuously eliminate these waste that is automatically Kaizen that is automatically continuous improvement. So, simply you identify waste and then focus how to eliminate those waste your improvement will take place. Now, this particular diagram gives us a very interesting uh, picture of the lean system that uh, what is the lean all about. So, it is given in the form of uh, four important building blocks which are making my lean system and then you see that uh, what are the ultimate goal of lean system that is a balanced rapid flow that is the ultimate objective of uh, lean approach whatever we are discussing. So, that uh, you can change your products uh, you can change your systems uh, at a faster rate and for that purpose the supporting goals are eliminate disruptions and make the system flexible. These are the supporting goals one and the second supporting goal is to eliminate the waste. So, these are my supporting goals uh, to achieve the objectives of uh, lean manufacturing and what are the uh, various building blocks these are product design, process design, then human related elements and then manufacturing planning and control. Now, you see that uh, all these four building blocks are complete subject on their own. Manufacturing planning and control is a complete subject in which uh, label loading, pull systems, visual controls like Kanban, then how to control your WIP, the vendor relationships uh, which are the part of supply chain management then reduce transportation processing and preventive maintenance and housekeeping. All these things are the important component of your manufacturing planning and control. Out of this some of the things we have already discussed, some of the things are being discussed in uh, supply chain management, some are discussed under uh, some other courses. Then this is related to human resource management. Important thing, the philosophical thing that you need to consider your workers as your important assets. Workers are your important assets that is one important thing you have to realize. They are not your liability. Many a times we do not have, we do not go with proper camaraderie with our workers. So, you need to have that kind of bonding where workers and you, workers and managers need to have this approach that we both are working for the same objective cross training of the workers uh, so that uh, they have the feeling of job enrichment uh, and this will give them uh, high morale. Continuous improvement, uh, continuous training of the workers are required, cost accounting and leadership abilities so that you can motivate them for higher levels of growth. Similarly, process design you need to produce in a smaller light size. So, your EPQ related issues are there. Setup time reduction we discussed in a one of our session about SMED, single minute exchange of die. So, how to achieve the faster change of uh, production system so that you can have manufacturing cells. We have already discussed uh, in our facility layout about cellular manufacturing, quality improvement programs uh, particularly TQM and business excellence programs we need to adopt, then production facility uh, flexibility using the cellular layout and flexible manufacturing systems, uh, we can achieve the production flexibility. A balanced system, you should be able to provide a kind of trade off between various conflicting objectives. Like continuously we talk of QCD in operation management. We need good quality product, but we want to have those good quality products at the lower cost 
and we want to have faster delivery of them. So, how to have a system which is of reasonable quality, reasonable cost and reasonable delivery. So, if this type of system is designed that is a balanced system. Then uh, already we discussed that uh, we need to minimize our work in process. So, little inventory storage during the processing stages and fail safe method. This is again related to quality. The Shingo developed this concept of fail safe method that uh, right from the beginning you should uh, work, you should work uh, so that there is no mistake right from the first time. So, these kind of concepts are required in improving our processes. Then with respect to product design standard parts. Now, again there is a problem on one side we are going for more and more standardization so that we can achieve the economies of scale. But at the same time we are also looking customization in the final product. So, you need to see that standardization in the components and customization in the finished product you need to achieve both these things simultaneously. Therefore, we go for the modular designs where we are keeping the components ready with us, but the final assembly final product will be made as per the customer specification. So, more and more modularity will enable us to achieve this kind of end product customization. The quality obviously, we all understand that quality is a very important order winning criteria. So, how to achieve excellent level of quality and concurrent engineering, where the discussions of design team and the manufacturing team go parallelly and not only design and manufacturing, but after sales support and the marketing. So, all the functional people who are involved in making a product and after that delivering a product and after that maintaining a product, all those teams are sitting together in designing the product. Earlier all these concepts used to take place in watertight compartments and therefore, product development times used to be in few years. Now, with the use of concrete engineering kind of concepts, we are able to reduce this concept of years to few weeks because all teams are sitting together and they are able to share their expertise so that uh, the product is developed uh, within few weeks. So, these type of concepts are helping us these are the building blocks uh, for developing a good lean system. So, with this we understood that what is lean system and how lean system is uh, very important uh, for the modern day operations uh, and particularly we want to have uh, a balanced rapid flow of the production system where we can eliminate the waste and we can have more flexibility, we can eliminate disruptions and therefore, all these different labels product, process, human resource and manufacturing planning and control at all these labels you have to work simultaneously then only you can achieve the objectives of lean system. So, with this we come to end of this session, thank you very much.